Welcome guys, in this tutorial I will show you guys how to make a stylized water. Now in this tutorial um, I will try to overcome the effect of tiling which most of you probably have experienced if you've tried to work with textures and waters. And then, um, so this tutorial, um, I will break this down into four stages and I have those up here. So first stage is when we just make a simple water with just, uh, just, a, um, just two panels going across each other. Next thing we'll do is we'll add a depth fade here so the edges look really nice and smooth. And then after this, we will add a distance um, thing. So right now, if you guys can see, you can um, see these but as we go further away. Uh, the textures get bigger, so this will uh, reduce our tiling effect almost completely. And finally, last thing we'll do is we'll get the water to move at the edges as well. So let's get started. So to get started, we'll make a new material right here. I'll call this M underscore stylized water. Once we've done this, we'll double click and open this. And inside here, I'll select this and change the blend mode to translucent. And I'll make this um, the, in the lighting mode. I'll change this down to surface translucency volume. Now down here, um, I'll add two vector ones. So I'll hold one and left click twice. I'll connect one to our metallic. I'll convert this to parameter and call this metallic. And the second I'll connect to our roughness and we'll call this roughness. Uh, convert to parameter. I'll call this roughness. Okay, now I'll turn the roughness up to 1 and leave the metallic at 0. Next, um, I'll add two textures, uh, two vector 3, so I'll hold 3 and left click twice. And we'll convert both of these two parameters. And this one I'll call color 1. And color 2. Now I'll add a lerp here. We'll connect the color 1 into A and the color 2 into B. Then I'll add a funnel and this I will connect to the alpha and I'll add a vector 1 again and I'll connect this to the expo and I'll convert this to parameter and we'll call this expo. Now we'll connect the lerp into our base color. Then we need to add a normal map for the water. So for this I'll just press T and left click here twice. Or I'll just do it once and then down here. Now um, I'll be using the water normal map that should be inside your starter content. So I'll search for it here. I have lots because I'm using other contents as well. So I'll choose the one we have in our starter content. I'll make two copies of this and I'll leave this here. Now I'll add a panna. So right click and type panna. And I'll make a copy of this as well. Then I'll connect this into the UV of our texture sample. Then I'll just um, add a lerp. I'll connect the top one into A and the bottom one into B. And this I will connect into our normal map. And uh, of course one more thing we'll do is I'll uh, add another one vector and I'll connect this to opacity. And I'll convert this to parameter and call this opacity. And I'll leave the value at 1 for now. Now in our panel, um, the value I like to use is uh, 0 0.08 and 0 0.09. And for the other for the other one, minus 0 0.08 and minus 0 0.09. Now our basic uh, water material is now ready. So now if we save this. And I'll just minimize. Now we can drag this water material onto our um, mesh. I'm just using a, um, a um, straight mesh. It has a lot of, uh, it's been unwrapped and uh, it has um, a lot of vertices. So if you guys want to, sh uh, I'll show you guys. This has about um, 7200 tris. So this is the water mesh you're using. Uh, it's just a plain mesh. You guys can make this in Blender or you can even use the um, template for inside the starter content for this example. Now I'll go back to my water and I'll drag this down here 
Very I'll make a material instance and then I'll drag the material instance down here. Now if I open this, material instance, down here we can change the color, so I'll choose two colors. Choose a pure blue, and I'll choose a kind of like sky blue color. And then in the expo, I'll turn this up a little bit. You guys can turn it up as much as you want, so wherever you guys like it. And now you guys can see that we have a very, very simple um, water that's kind of going on. Um, so it's, it's kind of working, but don't worry, we'll make this better. So this was stage one, setting up our basic um, water. Actually, if I do show you guys, uh, this is a lot smaller, the uh, water plane that we have. This water would actually look pretty good down here. So as, as you guys can see, our first stage is done. Now we'll move on to the second stage. Alright, so um, for this I'll be using um, one of these as an example. So right now I'll just drag this water, um, this, this, um, there's some stylized instance here, and we'll be moving on from here. So for the second stage, we'll reopen this. And now what you want to do is, I'll, uh, I'll select all of these uh, normal maps, and I'll move these down, and this lerp, to give us some space. And in the opacity, I'll right click, and I'll add a depth fade. And I'll connect the opacity into opacity, and this depth fade into the opacity down here. And I'll press 1 and add another vector parameter. And uh, down here, I'll call this uh, fade distance. So exactly what it says down there. And we can change this later and I'll show you what this does. So now we'll just save this. And minimize. Now if you guys um, keep your eyes here, basically right now we have a really, really sharp edge. But when we go in here and we look at our opacity, I'll turn the opacity down to 0.9 first. So it becomes a more, uh, just a bit more see-through. And I'll go to fade distance and I'll turn this up to 100. Now you guys can see we have a nice smooth kind of like an edge here. The distance you guys choose will really affect how small this thing is. So a lower value would mean that it's you know, right at the edge. And if you say maybe, I don't know, like 200. You guys can see that we have, this looks pretty, really, really cool. So this is the second effect we, uh, we've just done. I'll leave this at 100. And now we'll move on to the third stage. Right, so uh, the third stage will probably be the longest in this video, and uh, just stay with me and we can get through this uh, with ease. So the third stage we'll be dragging our normal map and our lerp, and we'll be kind of moving this kind of like up here, and we'll control C and control V down here. So make two copies of this. Now we'll uh, make the lerp here, so hold L and press, and then connect the this one into here and this one into here. Now in the top hand we have uh, we have one. The, the top one is doesn't have a minus, and the second one has a minus. So in this view, on the opposite, or actually we could just um, we could just leave it like this. It's all fine. Now we'll add a U. So we'll press U and left click here to add a texture coordinate. From this we'll bring out a multiply node, or you can just hold M and click twice, and we'll connect this into A in both of these multiply nodes. So this um, this method will kind of help us um, eliminate our tiling, and then I'll add a vector parameter one here and down here as well. Connect this into B and this into A. I'll convert these both to uh, parameters. Top one I'll uh, name this. Actually, I'll turn the default value up to one, and I'll call this um, tiling one and the second one call this tiling 2. I'll just move this a bit back and from here now um, we'll take this and we'll connect this into the um, coordinates of our panner, both of our top panners and we'll take this and connect this to the uh, coordinates in these ones here. And the this tiling 2 we can change this down to about 0.5 which should, uh, which should do just be good for our, our purpose. Now we're going to right click here and we'll type a uh, world position and we'll bring in a world position coordinate and then we'll type camera position ws and we'll bring this in. So this will kind of like um, let our system know what we're exactly looking for. 
And down here, I'll add a uh, distance node. So just in um, utility, just a simple distance node. I'll we'll connect the first one into A and the second one into B. And down here, we'll add a divide. And we'll connect this uh, into divide. And we'll, down here, we'll add a one vector. And we'll connect this into B. And I'll we'll call this change uh, distance. So this this will be uh, how far away we need to be for. Um, our texture to switch from this down to this tiling and then next we will add a power and the exponent this I'll um, add a one vector we connect this here convert the parameter and I'll call this power x exp and we'll connect this into uh, one sec into uh, into a clamp so we'll bring in a clamp We'll connect this here, and we'll connect our clamp inside to uh, inside the alpha or texture. Now we'll simply uh, connect our this lerp into our normal map right here. So far, we've done three stages. So first stage is up here, second stage is down here, and this has been our third stage. Now we'll save this. Once we've done this, we'll minimize, and now um. We'll go into our instance again, and down here we'll turn our power expo to about four, and uh, we'll turn our distance to about one thousand, or maybe twenty five hundred. Now, if you guys notice something, now when we're close up, uh, you can see. Actually, we'll, all, we'll turn on tiling 1 to up to 10, so you guys can really see the effect this has. So now when we are quite close, you can see the texture is really tiled, but as we start to move away, uh, 2500 units, our texture um, has changed. And now there's no more tiling left on our texture. And now for our last stage, we'll just uh, make the water move. For this, I'll be using a simple grass wind node. It's not too complicated, it's really simple. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the best way to, to do this, but it, um, it works, so... Bring in a simple grass wind node and we'll connect the result into world position offset. Now I'll add three vector one parameters and I'll convert all of these into parameter and I'll name them accordingly. So, first one I'll call w.intensity, second one I'll call w.weight, and last one I'll call additional wpo. Now for the last one, I'll turn this up to about 1, it should work pretty good. And these two I'll turn up to 0.4 and 0.4. And we'll save this and we'll just minimize. Alright, so now if you guys can uh, notice, our water is kind of moving down here as well. So in this, if we open our material instance, and we turn down the um, which one was it? Uh, turn down this expo here, or actually this is not the one. Um, the I'll turn up the opacity a bit. You guys can really see that our water tank is um, is actually moving now. So, so now you have a full full water that um, won't tile too much because as you move away, the texture will change. And then you have a nice um, depth fade at the edge and your water is moving. So all of these options right here now inside your um, tank will, uh, will kind of um, de um, determine what changes down here. So your additional WPO and your intensity and weight will change how much your water moves on the edge. Your opacity will basically um, determine how translucent or see-through your water is. Your basic colors will also um, give you uh, a lot of options to change your Colors to whatever you guys want. Your uh, your, your um, power expo, you don't really need to change too much. Your tiling um, will also determine. So if I turn this up to five, which is a lot of tiles. So this would um, you guys can use these options to adjust to um, whatever surface uh, you're using this on. So if you guys have a large area, I want to turn this down to one and this down to 0.5. But um, otherwise, you guys could do it with um, different values down here. 
your roughness and metallic you probably want to leave just like this and yeah and your and your distance will um uh, kind of determine how far away you have to be to get the change in the um, texture to switch between the two textures one is more tiled um, and the other is less tiled so this was it guys this was um, basically how you could um make your translucent water and of course your um your expo well as you guys can see here we cannot um, determine how much one color blends into the other as you guys can see if I turn this value um, up and down so you guys this was it and I hope you guys found this useful and thanks for watching